you are welcome to chemistry made simple. Today we are going to also begin with our tutorial. We are going to look at geometric analysis part three, which concerns or dealt with titration. We have already discussed from our previous part that titration is an act. Today we are going to look at the act, the rudiments. What entails in the act? That is what you are going to do today. Therefore, I will have to introduce our madam, who is in our laboratory right now, who will be helping us to go through the practical act of titration. She is in the person of Madam Jennifer Abna Brempe. She will be helping us with our practical act of titration. Quickly, we are going to focus on the procedure so that we know the rudiments, the practical act, what is needed, what is expected of us in the course of titration. Material, stroke apparatus needed. We will need three conical flasks or three LMIS flask. Also, we have here our region bottles. One region bottle labeled A, one region bottle labeled B. This contains solution A, this contains solution B, as it has been specified by our question to answer. Now, we also have our indicator to use, which is the final study. We have our direct mounted nicely, which has been rinsed. One, it was rinsed three times with the tap water, and then three times with the ionized water. Now we also have our pipette with a pipette filler, which will help us to suck and also eject. This pipette has also been rinsed three times with tap water and then three times with deionized water. Deionized water is the same as distilled water. We have our wash bottle, which is also filled with deionized water. We have our dropping pipette, which will help us pick some few drops of the phenolphthalein as our indicator. Now, we are going to begin with the act. But before we begin, I want to ask a very simple question, which is supposed to be answered by you. When I was describing the procedure and then what we have done in the whole process before we are going to begin with the titration, I said specifically we have rinsed the bread three times with tap water three times with the ionized water. And then, we have also rinsed the same duet with solution A, some few centimeter cube of solution A. The question is, why is it that we only rinsed the Elimaeus flask three times with tap water, three times with the ionized water, but we did not rinse the Elimaeus flask with the solution B that we are supposed to put in here. That question goes to you. You can pause the video, then answer the question. You can also guess. If your guess is that it will increase the volume of the amount which has already been pipetted, then you are correct, which will also interfere with the title volume, then you are correct. Therefore, it is not important, it is unnecessary, it is not advisable to rinse the Elimaeus flask with solution B before you start the titration. Our madam will begin the action. 
Madam, it's up to you. So quickly, I realize that she has picked the region for to A because of the instructions from the question. And then she has transferred that portion to the chronicle class. Sorry, she has transferred it into the direct quickly. What she's doing is what we term as flashing out the bubbles. What she's doing is what we term as flashing out the bubbles. When you flash out the bubbles, you flash out the bubbles to get the exact volume which is supposed to be measured. So always it is advisable to always call the solution in such a way that it goes above the zero mark so that you'll be able to flash out the bubbles and then get a uniform solution in the event. Now our madame will still continue with her action. That is solution B. So let's see what she's going to do. She's pouring away the deionized water which was used to rinse the Elimaeus flask or the conical flask. So this time she's pipetting the 25 centimeter cube portion of solution B to be used. Remember that whenever you are filling the pipette, we always fill about the calibrated mark. Then you regulate to the 25 centimeter cube calibrated mark. And that is what she did. Quickly, she has also transferred the whole volume in the pipe in the pipette into the conical flask. Of which I told you from our theory that when the portion from the pipette is being transferred into the conical flask, it is called the aliquot. This time, she has, she has also sterilized the dropping pipette nicely. She's going to use that portion. She's going to use that pipette, dropping pipette, to also pick some few drops of the phenolphthalein. So she added only two drops. It can be three. It can be three. It can also be two. Depending on how you want to go through your hydration. So this time she's going to begin with the hydration. If there is a need to do some adjustment as she's doing, you do that adjustment so that you don't find yourself wanting. So this time she's adding drop by drop, bit by bit, to see where the color change will exactly occur. Remember, it is a weak acid against a strong beat. We have already learned from the theory that at the end, the solution will be alkaline in nature. You are also to note the color of the indicator before we started the titration. Before we started the titration, we realized that the color was pink. Good. Now, this is the portion we have approached, almost closer to colorless almost closer to colorless. We will discuss the effect while you still see the color as light pink. We will discuss that one. Thank you, madam. You can continue with the second one. 
for us. We will discuss the errors. You will discuss the errors, but we don't normally consider it. In fact, for the purposes of WASI and then the examiners who will um, have the opportunity to watch this video, you will notice the effects and then some changes in certain things that you are doing over here. Remember that in science, we always base on the theory to perform the practical act. Therefore, everything that we are going to do, we are going to use the perspective of, from the theory to describe whatsoever thing you are doing over here. And you realize that that is the correct thing. So she has also finished with a portion that she's supposed to pipette. And then the few drops she has added into it. Can see the color pink. So this indicates that the pH of the solution is within a certain range. That is why solution B, as it was pipetted into the conical flask, it's showing a pink color. We have already discussed the colors of the various indicator in the various solution. So this time, she's stopping up. She doesn't want any trouble. She just wants to eliminate certain errors as soon as possible. Therefore, I can see that she has stopped it up. She's going to flash out the bubble. I, I told you that we top it, we always make sure that it goes above the zero mark. Then we flash out the bubbles. And that is what she's doing. So that we get the zero mark from the calibrated duet. So she's beginning with another form. Now, the first titration is always termed as rough titration. So the first titration has given us a distinctive idea where the end point will be, the volume, the particular volume of the acid that is supposed to be added in order to almost approach a color change of colorless. Remember, you are not going to get colorless. You approach a point of almost getting a colorless solution. We will describe or we will discuss why you shouldn't get colorless, as a lot of people have been getting that in their wasi. We will discuss that. So, So we will discuss that. So she's going to perform the second titration once again. Watch her as she does it. In fact, don't be troubled with a pipette filler. Uh, you can use your mouth, as we used to do in the olden days. This is only to help so that you don't drink portions of the solution before you complete school. Or if you are in your laboratory right now, so that you don't drink portions you are not supposed to drink. That is why there is a need for the pipette filler. So, uh, the rest of the schools, I recommend the pipette filler. If your school can, can buy the air pipette, it's okay because it's much. Okay, so she has added a few drops of the indicator. See how 
she is comfortable handling the various apparatus. That is what you are supposed to do, or that is how you are supposed to act when you are in the examination hall. Now, what's the candidates who be writing? Don't panic. Just relax and then do what you are supposed to do. See, she's more relaxed. Just following the rules, certain principles. So she's going to begin. Once again, the second titration. Remember, everything that you do will affect your title value. With a list or a little mistake, you are going to have problems. See, she's so much careful to the extent that she makes sure the tip of the burette does not touch the floor, the workspace. Otherwise, the tip of it will be contaminated. So, we don't just make any form of practice. We go through careful practice. We also recognize that before she starts her titration, she picks the funnel out from the burette before she starts. And then the second thing that she does is to regulate the volume, flash out the bubbles to regulate the volume. That is what she does always before she starts with a normal titration. See what has happened? Good. Our madam is very good. She realized that the pipette picked some few centimeter cube of air bubbles. So she has poured the solution back into it. And then she's picking it once again. It has, it, it has picked it again. The tip, of the, the tip of the pipette must be totally immersed. So that air bubbles will not be part. Remember, in what you don't make that mistake. When you realize that you have air bubbles inside, just flush it out and then rip my pet. The whole volume again. Other than that, the few centimeter cube of the air bubbles will also take part in the volume. So it means that the volume you are thinking it is 25 centimeters is not the actual volume because the air, uh, the air bubbles has also taken portion. So nicely, she has transferred everything to it. She will then add the phenolphthalate. If enough talent, they settles. So whenever you want to take few drops, make sure the whole solution is uniform. So few drops. Okay. So.
We have this color. I'm going to start with my tradition.
to In fact, our madam has done well. She has gone through the high fusion. This is very, very perfect. Now, we are going to discuss the color. So we pick the, the, the conical class one after the other, then we discuss the volume. So what volume really? Give us this result 23.3 23.3 cm cube. Give us this color. What volume was it give us that? 23.2 give us this color. What give us this? 23.3. So, see, the other time we discussed that. There is something we call the tighter value. The tighter values, there should be consistency. I told you that the differences between them should either be plus or minus 0 0.2, plus or minus 0 0.1. You realize that their values are very consistent. So we are going back. To the board, and I'm going to draw nicely how she went through the whole thing. So you first record the volume of your pipette that you used. And then the indicator used. Which is enough time. Then, quickly, We have direct readings in CMQ. So we have first direct reading, second direct reading, third direct reading. So we have our final reading, initial reading, and then volume of acid used. Our final reading, our madam said it was 23.3, zero. And then our initial 0, 0.00. And then the second, 23.20, 0, 0. 23.30 So the volume of the acid used 23.30 23.20 23.30 So that is how we draw the table In fact, you are not supposed to do any cancellation you are not supposed to cancel anything or deepen anything 
in the table. When you think you are wrong, you leave the table, you can just write rough work on the table, and then you leave it, and then you come and draw another one again. You are not supposed to cancel, I want to repeat once again, you are not supposed to cancel or depict anything in the table. Everything must be recorded nicely and in two decimal places. Today, we have been able to go through the titration. The titration was between a weak acid and then a strong base. A weak acid and a strong base. The indicator used was phenolphthalein. Before you start the titration, Now, before we start the titration, what was the color of the indicator in the base or in the alkaline solution? Now, the answer. Deep pink. That was the colors you were seeing before we start the titration. Remember, phenolphthalein, we have already talked about the theory. Phenolphthalein in the basic solution. It's pink. Here it was deep pink. So it's all pink. Now, at the end of titration, that is the end point. At end point, what would be the color of the indicator? We have already explained from theory that when you titrate a strong, a weak acid against a strong base, or a strong base against a weak acid, the solution will be alkaline in nature, which means the pH will range from 8 and then thereabouts. So it will be basic in nature. If it will be basic in nature, we have already learned from the theory that the color of phenolphthalein in a basic medium or in an alkaline medium is pink. So which means the deep pink will run down to faint pink, almost approaching colorless. It is not colorless. So for my various examiners, whenever you go for the board meeting, do that ratification. It is never colorless. We always accept colorless, but it is not. When you go to precision in chemistry, that is a wrong answer. Colorless is a wrong answer. 
it is accurate, all right, but in precision, it is wrong. So, what would be the color of the indicator at end point? Answer. Faint pink. See, the color fainted. It was deep. It is faint. Now, a single drop will lead me to a colorless solution. A single drop within this will lead me to a colorless solution. It doesn't mean that the solution must be colorless. So previously, in one seat, they do accept colorless. But my friends, in chemistry, if you want a precise value or a precise titration, then your color change must be the color change we have over here and not colorless. So it should be faint pink. That will be the color of the indicator. Why? At end point, was between a weak acid and a strong base, the solution is not alkaline or basic. That is why the color should still be what? Faint pink, not colorless. If you record colorless, you are indicating two things. It is either your, you have run more acid than the base, therefore the solution becomes acidic, which is wrong. So if you get colorless, it means your solution is either acidic, has rich an acidic nature, which means the pH of that solution is not from 8 and then above, where phenolphthalein can work best. It means you are wrong from the theory. You are wrong. That is why I said my various examiners listen to this very carefully. It means you have run more than more acid than the base, and for that matter, you have approached acidic solution. Or you have run equivalent volume of the acid to that of equivalent volume of the base and therefore equivalent moles reacted. In that condition, you are approaching a solution where it is neutral. Why? Phenolphthalein in a neutral solution is colorless. Phenolphthalein in acidic solution is also colorless, of which we have already proven that in our part two. That is why you are supposed to be very careful when you are dealing with such titration. Today, we have been able to go through a simple titration where we titrated a weak acid against a strong base. And we have been able to finalize our colors, our answers, and then the rest. We are going to also capture another form of titration where we are going to use a strong acid and then a strong base a strong acid and a strong base quickly our madam will help us in fact she has done a very good job uh, looking at what she did it is not easy that is why a lot of people pass the end point to get colorless solution it is not easy because you are supposed to be very keen. So she's going to also help us to also titrate the strong acid against a strong base. In fact, we have already learned the theory. I will also introduce the theory as we are looking at the practical so that we know what color is expected of us. In fact, because we are going to 
hydrate a strong acid against a strong base, you bear in mind with me that the indicator that would be best and appropriate for this medium should be guitar orange. In fact, you can also choose phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein can also be best. Why? At the end, the solution will be neutral. I said we will discuss a lot. In fact, our madam is ready to take us through the second part, which is strong acid and then strong base. So we have our system over here nicely. In fact, my WASI candidates, if you are watching this, whenever you go to the room and then you approach anything of a sort, that is what is expected of you. You can see that it is almost colorless, but it is not. When you approach colorless, you have also ended up in a very different thing. When you go to university, you are going to find it very difficult because there you'll be expected to do everything in a precise manner, not accuracy. Because in science, we respect precision. Good, so you can watch it once again. That is the color which is expected. It was very deep, it has, it has run to faint. So that is it. Our madam will help us with solution A, which is hydrochloric acid, and then solution B, which is sodium hydroxide. This is a strong acid, this is a strong base. Therefore, the choice of our indicator is metal orange. So she's going to use any of them. So you can see the process. She's going to fetch me the still or the ionized water quickly. Our tap is not flowing. So we use that still or the ionized water. Quickly. To rinse our three elements flat. So you can see a conical flask or a mice flask. Um, so I'm rinsing everything nicely three times. So you can see. We don't just use our mouth three times. It's supposed to be three times. Three times, as I said, three times is three times. You want to do everything nicely. So everything is set. Uh, you want to amount this and then replace it with another one. So that we don't go through the problem of raising again. We have enough. So she's mounting another duet, which has been arranged nicely. Sorry, it has to go to this side. Okay. So Mm-hmm. 
tap water. So what do you need to do is to rinse with the, the ionized water. And then later we will rinse with solution A. I told you from our first titration that it is only the conical flask we don't rinse the solution B with. Or any other solution. It is only the ionized water we use to rinse the conical flask and then tap water. That's all. Then you are set to go. So she's rinsing. It's not easy. So she's going to do the raising with some few centimeters of solution A. Now the purpose of this is to make sure that the inside of the direct is uniform with the solution that we are going to use. The inside of the burette must be uniform. Okay. So, our madam is going to begin. continue with the same process flashing out air bubbles to uniformize the inside of the direct okay now she's going to continue with solution B Remember, we have discussed from our theory that at the end, the solution will be neutral. At the end, when you titrate a strong acid against a strong base, the solution will be neutral at end point. Now, we have also discussed the color of metal orange in a neutral solution. We have discussed that we said it to be orange. The color of metal orange in a neutral solution is orange. So when you have equal moles reacting at a point in time and then the solution is neutral, what you see is that the metal orange will change color and then the color will be slight, it will be orange. It is not red. It is orange. It is not pink. It is orange. Because you have been able to distinguish between pink and then the rest. So you are not going to get a pink color. You are going to get an orange color. Why? The solution will be neutral. The orange in a neutral solution is orange. Now, we still want to watch our madam. Let's look at the color we will observe. Metal orange in solution B. Now, 
you can pause the video and then guess what color this is. If your guess is that the color in here is yellow, then you are correct. The color range in the basic solution is yellow. So the color change we expect is supposed to be orange. Remember, changing from yellow to orange is light. Therefore, that is what mostly trick students, they pass the end point, they get red, pink, and then the rest. And then when it happens that way, the, the white, they are being pushed to select pink, and then red, and then so on. In fact, we want to systemize our signs. The white, we have been able to do it, we can also do it. We are supposed to go by the books. It's supposed to be orange, not pink, and not red. Red and pink, they are accurate. You want precision, you want a precise color. So, nicely, a simple drop of this volume will end up in red, which means we have passed the end point. So, as you can see, she's going to run another one. You see, from the yellow to the, uh, the orange, it's very slight. Just a slight change. That is what mostly confuses people. That is what even most con uh, confuses the other people who want to discuss the color change and then the rest. So... That is the color. It's not red. It's orange. If you are confused with colors, you can go, you can go to Google and then check colors of orange. You see them. My dear candidates, don't be deceived. When you go to the university, you do it. And you need the precise color. So that is the orange color. Okay. Okay. So she's going to begin. Notice the color change. Our madam is very keen. In terms of handling the apparatus, very comfortable. That is that is how you are supposed to behave. Very comfortable in handling the material, so that when you leave this our continent, you can fit in anywhere. So she is brushing out the air bubbles. That is what she's doing. She said, observe the color change to a space yellow. You want to observe a color change at end point. Orange, which is light. It's light. Close to pink, close to red. So, you are supposed to do more lab work so that you are comfortable with handling the apparatus. If, 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 in fact, if you are marvel at how she is handling the previous apparatus and the rest, 
consistency. Yes. So this will be our last running. This is going to be our last running. Then in our next meeting, we will look at the analysis itself. This one, we only make the theoretical analysis. You will go through the calculations, the mathematical analysis, so that you understand everything perfectly. Why I am still arguing that the color should be this? It is based on the values. That is why I'm still arguing that the color, the, the, the color must be this, the color must be that. Because everything that has happened over here is as a result of values. It did not occur just uh, uh, like something which just appeared. No. This is not magic, it's science. So we are going to look at my, uh, 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 how the values affect our various analysis and then the rest. So she's flashing out the air bubbles to get uniformity in the birette. She has done that nicely. Okay, so she has begun with the last attrition. Consistency. She's going to announce her values to you, the volume she ran. First value, second value, third value, consistency. So, and then in everything, she made sure that she started from the zero mark. Now, we will go through the simple table once again. used, you will discard the color change later. So I'm going to draw this nicely. Now, how to draw the table should be on your fingertips. In a very simple way. Don't just confuse yourself. So, take this for it. When you zero, zero. Now, 
we are supposed to calculate for the average title. The first one, I did not do it because I knew we were going to do this one too. So it will mouse the same idea. We want to pick values that are consistent. I told you earlier from our theory that if you have three values that are very consistent, you pick them. The average means the mean. So you pick the three. If you have only two that are consistent, you pick only two. Remember, the consistency we are talking about, I said the difference should be plus or minus 0 0.2, plus or minus 0 0.1. So we have over here average data is equal to any of my consistency. I know that three values are very, very consistent. Therefore, I will divide by three. Dividing it by three, my average factor would be what? It still be this. So we have single. with a calculator whether it is correct. Confirmation is necessary. So that is our average title. This is the volume. This is the volume that reacted with what 25 centimeters cube. Within this volume we have equal modes of the acid over here. That reacted with equal moves of the base as it was in the 25 cm cube. That is, that is the principle. Don't worry, we will continue with the part four, where we will go through the mathematical analysis as I told you. In fact, our madam has done well by taking us through the very simple act of titration, which is very precise. In fact, it wasn't accurate. It is a precise or a precision form of titration she has taken us through. We will thank Madame Abna Trempe Jennifer for that. In fact, she did the various form of act uh, of the titration in terms of the practical activity. I did not do it. So uh, kudos to her. Now in our next meeting You will look at the part four of the volumetric analysis, where I told you you are going to look at the conceptual understanding of the mole concept, how to apply the mole concept to solving problems of this situation, where you have been given a, a specific solution to, to, be, uh, to be standardized. Remember, always one is standardized, one is unstandardized. So we are going to standardize one of them. We will go through the calculations and then you will see the analysis we will go through for that. Now, we have very, very simple questions. That also includes the first one. What was the color of the indicator in the base? This time it was metal orange. What was the color? It said yellow. Now, at end point, what color change do we expect? the indicator which is orange I said it is almost close to red and pink but it is not pink and then red so that is the color change we expect now the theory behind it why that is the why the theory behind it at the end point because the titration was between strong acid and then a strong base the solution will be what? Neutral. The solution will be neutral. Except the color change goes to red when you have run more volume of the acid. I'm, I'm also interpreting the various 
form of uh, challenges that you may get. When you run more of the volume of the asset than the base, you will get the indicator moving backwards to form a red color. So the indicator will be red in there. And if you also run more of the base than that of the asset, the, the color will not change, it will still be yellow. So before you get to, before you reach the end point, the color will still be yellow, which means the solution is still at alkaline in nature. If you go to paint, then that is worse. So the color change which is expected of us is the orange. I said the solution will be neutral. If you want to confirm that, when you go to your schools, ask your teacher, to pick a neutral solution, water, and then add few centimeter cube or few portions or few drops of metal orange. Yeah. Notice the color change over there. If it is red, tell me. If it is pink, tell me. If you confirm that it is orange, then it means that at the end of your titration, I must place emphasis on that. You should get an orange color as our madam had. You, but in fact, some people they have problem with color, so they can't identify color. The, some people will see this one as red. It's not red. <laughs> some people will see this one as red. It's not red. This is orange. It's not red. That is why. What, that is why I even advise that you can go to Google and then punch orange color. It will give you the category of orange colors, and you see that they are within the range. Of the colors I've shown you from our desk. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and then you are highly welcome. In fact, in our next meeting, you look at the part three where you enjoy everything and more. Thank you for watching. I'll meet you.